Good morning. Today is Friday, October 27. The time right now is three minutes to nine in the morning. Overnight, we can see weakness in equity markets in the, in the States. Uh, even though the uh, report from the Q3 estimates in the GDP was very, very good, market was expecting a growth of 4.1% in Q3 compared to Q2 of 2.1. So that's already almost doubling of what? Q2 did, but the market, uh, the number released was even better at 4.9%. So that caused an initial rush up in equity markets, but it was quickly uh, beaten back uh, on the idea that because of the very strong growth in the US economy, inflation is definitely a problem. And this gives rise to the idea the Federal Reserve may have to act now uh, instead of uh, uh, leaving with unchanged going into uh, next week FOMC meeting, which will be due on November the 1st. First. So this is actually uh, the sentiment right now uh, in, uh, impacting the equity markets. So we can see in the Dow Jones daily time frame, this is the cash index. Dow Jones actually fell to uh, 32,743 uh, almost 44. Uh, this is the lowest we have seen since the market peak in August of this year at 35,679. Uh, so this is actually laying the groundwork for further losses going into the remaining of the month itself. So we can see that uh, prices is that currently in a very weak spots. But however, there's consolation because somewhere between this level uh, in uh, in May 25th, uh, the uh, the price range between 32,586 to 32,870 caused prices to rally all the way to the year high that we saw at 35,679. So prices is back into this area. There's a good chance market may hold here. Uh, so this is the plus side. The downside is that the, uh, the sentiment looks a little bit poor right now. So we could see further losses going forward but then again you know there is hope uh, that today being the Friday uh, the market may actually hold out and take some profit over in the S&P 500 cash market we also saw a deeper pullback in the S&P 500 to 4,127.9 uh, this is basis the cash market the high traded so far is 4,607.07 and the prices are quickly coming to a point whereby it will also find some kind of support again very similar to the Dow on April 26 the market actually held out here before the market propelled to the year high of 4,607. And this level is 4,049 to 4,089. So if the prices drop another 50 points or so, it could hit this breakout of prices, which may actually elicit some kind of uh, buyer to re-emerge. Uh, re now over at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ actually finally did a three-wave equality move to 14,136.5, uh, although the equality is at 14,266.5. So we can see in the, in the NASDAQ futures here, we can see the prices has come back to a, a pricing point, uh, which it actually may cause prices to actually firm up a little bit. However, this is the first index that's actually gone negative. Now, compared to the other two equity index which I just shown you, the NASDAQ 100 is actually currently vulnerable because the last two days we have seen earning reports from Alpha and Meta that has been below estimates and this is causing a sell-off in tech stocks. So this is the reason why the NASDAQ, which have held up very, very well on a relative basis, finally is giving way. And this could actually saw, uh, uh, cause the market to actually ease off a little bit. But by and large, we can see that this is actually a three-wave move. So far, there is no acceleration to the downside. However, if the market do decline sharply below 13,300, that will be a different story altogether and we will have to reevaluate when that finally happens. Over in the Nikkei, we can see that the Nikkei is holding its own very well this morning at 30,700. Uh, although I would believe that the overnight sell-off in US equity could actually spill over into Asia and that may impact uh, uh, the Nikkei 225 going forward. Nikkei currently is not very far away from the low that we saw at uh, this month at 30,300, currently trading at 30,730. So a drop below this level, it is not impossible. So do look out for that. I think if that happened, I think there's a good catchment area between uh, 29,000 to 30,000. So do watch out for this 1,000 point range to hold the market, at least for now. Uh, over in Hong Kong, we can see Hong Kong market is holding barely above water. We can see that the market here uh, is touching an important level at 16,823. Uh, so uh, 823, this, this is the key level here, although the market do looks to be a sea of red to me. So this is actually laying the groundwork. If we do see a bounce, the bounce like, likely to be kept somewhere between 18,051 to 18,417 in the futures contract. So 
likely to see more downside than upside, okay? And over in the dollar index, the dollar remains quite elevated. Since Tuesday, we can see dollar currently uh, is trading at 106.61, although we are overnight higher at 106.89. So this look and feel suggests that there will be further upsides in the dollar. And I think the market will probably be gunning for 109 at the bare minimum. So do look, look out for further gains in the dollar. And we can see uh, in the euro versus the dollar, you can see euro dollar has returned back most of its gain that we saw early in the week on Tuesday. The high traded this week is 106.95 and now currently trading at 105.57. 50, uh, so likely to be the case, I think the market may actually go below 104.48 in the euro versus the dollar. Now in the sterling, I do have a little bit of a different interpretation. I think the market may actually hold. Currently, we can see the price is trading at 121.26, although the overnight low is 120.69. There's a very good chance for a market to rebound, but I think it should be kept between 120, uh, 123.70 to 124.40. So somewhere around this breakout of prices, we will see the unraveling one more time. Okay, the fundamental has poor because we can see that the most recent uh, Tuesday's uh, services PMI suggests that even the services sector, which is very important to the UK economy, has gone into contraction zone because it shows a number of 49.2, which is a anything below 50 is contraction zone. Okay, So we can see that overall, uh, the UK economy is not doing very, very well. And of course, the currency will reflect that. Okay, Over in the Aussie, the Aussie also is a good candidate for at least a bounce at the bare minimum, I think there's a good chance market will bounce back into the area between uh, 0 0.6380 to 0 0.6445. So this is a very, very small bounce, but again, uh, small victory will count as well. Okay, So right now, this is the situation. Over in dollar yen, we do see a break above the 150.16 high uh, at the beginning of the month uh, to a high overnight of 150.78. Uh, there was remarkably no major uh, buy stock been triggered because there was no rush up in prices. And this is understandable because all traders are aware of the risk of intervention by the Japanese authority. So do watch out for a sudden move to the downside. If it ever happened, that could be the one. Okay, that means to say that the Japanese authority has come in to intervene. Now, I previously mentioned last time, uh, this year last time, uh, yeah, the Japanese authority allows the dollar yen to rise to just under 152 before they come in with a sledgehammer and prices over time uh, did decline to just above 127 at the beginning of this year. So we can see that the market has rebound back to where it was before the intervention that we saw last year. So it's very likely the Japanese authority will come in with the same action all over again. And um, when we look at gold prices, gold prices is currently supported by the tension that's unfolding in the Middle East. Any kind of uh, escalation in the war uh, between the Israelis and Gaza. Now there is even worse news because there were a lot of chatters talking about trying to take out Iran. So if Iran is involved in this war, or if Israel actually launched a war against Iran, this will be a totally different animal altogether. And this could cause gold prices to really, really rally. So be aware of that uh, piece of news. So over the weekend, do watch out for any kind of development. So I would rather be long uh, gold than the, uh, to try to take some kind of short-term trading against it. Okay. Over in silver, we are seeing a bit of a pullback from a high of $23.69. Uh, Currently trading at twenty two dollars and eighty cents. There about the overnight low was at twenty two dollars and forty five cents. So by and large, if the market can pull back a little bit, that would be great because I think the market could hold at twenty one dollars and seventy five cents to as high as twenty two dollars. Sorry, twenty two twenty one dollars and seventy five cents to twenty two dollars and twenty four cents. So a bit of pullback into this green area would be great for positioning buy. Uh, so. The precious metal complex move as as a whole to the upside is actually more or less a given. So the other beneficiary of the so-called beneficiary of attention in the Middle East is of course energy prices. Now energy prices has actually seen a bit of a pullback uh, from the high of eighty nine dollars and eighty three cents. There's a very good chance that it may continue to weaken. Technically speaking, uh, the nearby support and as of now is about seventy nine dollars and sixty six cents to eighty dollars and eighty three cents. However, if these levels cannot hold the next area I would think logically could be a chance for the market to test the $76.40 in the future uh, in the cash 
cash market. So do watch out for further losses. Anyway, this is a lower to lower to buy markets. Uh, I'll be very, very keen to buy below $80 if it ever come. Okay. So because the tension in the Middle East is very palpable. And I think we could all smell it from here very far away that this tension in the Middle East is unlike any, uh, 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 it's really a uh, uh, ground offensive into the Gaza area, okay? Over in Bitcoin, we can see Bitcoin is also benefiting a little bit from the uncertainty in the traditional markets. We can see that Bitcoin recently rose to 35,132 and 75 cents on the back of expectation that one of the seven applicants for the uh, spot BTC ETF lesson will be granted. And there's a lot of speculation, although the SEC has been very mum about it. They have not been giving us any kind of clue as to when or if they will be granting any of those licenses, but the market expectation is very, very high. So technically speaking, even without that, that, that consideration, we can see that uh, this market is poised to go higher. So if we can get a bit of a pullback, all well and good, but if not, then I think the market has a good chance to rally all the way to test the 38,000, okay? So do watch out, 38,000, 40,000 is still within a, is within the realm of possibility. So do watch out for that. In the meantime, you take care and I'll come back to you next week with another update. Bye-bye.